My name's Aaron Boster, and I've been an MS neurologist for over a decade and a half. I have shepherded a lot of human beings through a new diagnosis of MS. In this video, I wanted to spend a few minutes and share with you what I would consider to be my top five tips for someone newly diagnosed with MS. Don't turn away, because that starts right now. Thanks for learning about MS with me, Aaron Boster. In clinic this week, I delivered an MS diagnosis to several young people, and I sat with them and their families as we talked through what the heck MS is and how we're going to frame a treatment plan to beat up on it. I wanted to spend a few minutes with you today and share with you what I would consider to be my top five tips that I want to convey to someone newly diagnosed with MS. Let's jump in. Number one, when do you need to call? MS is confusing. And one of the reasons it's confusing is because an attack, uh, flare, exacerbation, relapse, it's all the same thing. An MS attack is not predictable. And so you don't know when you're gonna have one and you don't know when you need to reach out to your neurologist, so that's confusing. So I would like to share two ways of addressing that. The first one is a very direct question to your care team, whether that's to the neurologist or to the MS nurse or what have you, and say, hey, listen, when do you recommend that I reach out to call you and how do I best do that? So that's an important thing to set up. And then in addition to that, I wanna teach you the 24-hour rule. So the 24-hour rule was something that my mentor, Dr. Omar Khan, would discuss in clinic. And I think it's very, very sensible. And I talk to my patients about it. If you have a new MS attack, that's caused by inflammation in the brain or spinal cord. Now, inflammation doesn't go away in a couple hours or even in a day. It stays longer. Think about this silly example. If you socked me in my jaw and my face got all puffy, that's puffed up because of inflammation. Tomorrow, my face is gonna be more puffy because inflammation doesn't go away that fast. All right, so if you think about an MS attack caused by inflammation, the symptoms should stick around longer than 24 hours. So the 24 hour rule works like this. If you have a new thing going on, you're, you wake up in your hands feeling numb and it goes away when you shake it out, you probably don't need to call the neurologist because that was a fleeting symptom and it didn't last even minutes, let alone a day. And so it's very unlikely to be because of a new inflammatory attack from MS. However, if you wake up and your hands kind of numb and the next day it's more numb, now that's a new neurological symptom that's gone on for more than a day, I think it's a good idea to call the neurologist. This 24 hour rule helps you identify when it's a good idea to reach out and when you might not need to. And this is very, very helpful, particularly in someone newly diagnosed. Here's why. When you're given a, a diagnosis of a chronic condition, MS is an example, but any chronic condition, you as a human being are gonna become more sensitized to your own body. If you have an itchy nose, you will ask a rational question. Is the itching nose related to the new diagnosis? and that can create anxiety and so on and so forth. But if you apply the 24 hour rule, it can kind of decrease the anxiety. I don't know if the itching's related, but it only occurred for a minute, so I'm not gonna worry about it. My first tip is to apply the 24 hour rule to help you sort out when to reach out to your clinician and when you might not need to. Real quick before we go on, if you're enjoying this video, do me a solid and give it a thumbs up. Also, if you haven't yet subscribed to the channel, please consider doing so. Those two actions teach the YouTube algorithm that you really appreciate this content and help push it out so more people impacted by MS can benefit. Thank you. Multiple sclerosis risks impacting lots of different areas of your life. And you're living your life moment by moment, day by day. And so you can experience a lot of ups and downs then you're only seeing your neurologist once every three months or once every six months or in some cases once every year. So trying to keep in mind all the things that have happened over the past three, six or 12 months and convey them in a succinct fashion to the neurologist is challenging. One of the ways that you can help 
manage this is by keeping some form of notebook or journal. Now, I'm not asking you to write down every single thing that happens every single minute of your life. I actually don't want you to do that because I want you to go live life. But taking some notes that you can refer back to is a really powerful tool. For example, you may have a period of time after um, a big Thanksgiving holiday that you celebrated at your house where for the following week you were kind of unsteady with your walking and you bumped into a couple things and it wasn't a super big deal but you wanted to talk about it so you made a note about it in your journal and you can bring that to your neurologist and go over it if you didn't write it down the likelihood that you remember it or that you remember all of it or that you remember to bring it up at the right time isn't very awesome and so this is a very very helpful tool now I'm a little old school and so here's an example of a, of a paper journal that I would actually use you could alternatively do this on your smartphone there's even apps out there that you can use to track your MS symptoms the point here is as you're learning about your MS symptoms and as you're living your life moment by moment it's a decent idea to keep some notes about things that come up, questions that you have, and symptoms that you've experienced that you want to talk to your doctor about. Number three is to prepare for your neurologist visit. When I am getting ready to see a patient in clinic, I review my past clinic notes. I go through all their recent labs, and I oftentimes will look through their most recent MRIs, and I will generate a list of things that I think I need to cover and discuss and questions that I'm going to have for the patient. I literally prepare for your visit. And I want you in many ways to prepare for your visit as well. Take that journal or notebook that we just talked about and flip back through it and generate a list of questions, things that you wanna ask your neurologist. Take a moment and jot down exactly what medicines you're taking at what doses and what time points, include all the vitamins, minerals, and supplements because you know that you're gonna to need to convey that to the neurologist. If you can prepare ahead of time, and if you can enter into the room with your list of questions in hand, it's going to make that interaction much more successful. It's going to decrease the likelihood that you forget a question that you need to ask, and it's going to make you feel that you got a lot more out of that clinic visit. Number four is to bring a village member with you to clinic. Allow that person to help get you there on time, to de-stress the situation allow that person to be the holder of your list. During the visit, they can kind of peruse it and make sure that you're covering all of your questions and prompt you if you've forgotten to bring one up. Allow that person to be your official note taker to write down key points that the clinician brings up. After the visit, you and that village member can sit down and powwow and make sure that you both had a good understanding of the visit. And this is a great way of making sure that you get the most out of what's going on and that nothing's missed. Bring a village member. Number five is really, what do you focus on during the 360 some days that you're not seeing your MS provider? As you're trying to live your best life despite having MS, what should you be doing? Because that sounds overwhelming. And so I want you to be five for five in your fight against MS. There are five things that I want you to be doing top of mind to live your best life despite having MS. Number one, I want you to not smoke stuff. Smoking increases the risk to develop MS. And if you've been diagnosed with MS, continuing to smoke speeds up the disease by almost 50%. Now, fortunately, if you stop smoking, it slows the disease back down. So what is something that you can be doing to actively help your MS? You cannot smoke. So that's number one. Number two is to supplement low levels of vitamin D. Now, you need to do this with your doctor. I'm not just telling you to go eat a bunch of vitamin D. But low levels of vitamin D tend to correlate with faster disease worsening. And higher levels, levels above 50 but below 100 in that range, tend to correlate with better MS outcomes. And so supplementing your vitamin D, checking the levels, and taking the supplements is another important element, I believe, in trying to live your best life despite having MS. Number three is to exercise as part of your lifestyle. Now it's very easy for me to waggle my finger and tell a patient to go exercise. It's very hard for me to work 12 hours and come home and do anything but sit. So I'm sensitive to this 
However, the data is very, very clear that people impacted by MS who exercise as part of their lifestyle literally end up less disabled at the end of their lives. They maintain brain volume. They literally slow down brain shrinkage, which is really, really important in MS. They handle stress better. They have better sleep. They have less fatigue. They have less depression. I can go on. My point here is that exercise is super important. And so coming up with realistic expectations for exercise, going for a walk after dinner, doing a yoga DVD, these kind of things are super duper important and they need to be part of your lifestyle. This is something that you can work on to actively improve your life despite having MS. Number four is to take the most effective MS disease modifying therapy you're comfortable with and make sure it's working. Making sure it's working involves interacting with your care team, making sure that you're not having any new neurological attacks and that you're not pulling away from the litmus test of life. It involves making sure that your neurological examination and testing in the clinic isn't changing or getting worse. It involves periodically looking at MRIs of the brain and spine to make sure there's no new structural damage. It also involves making sure that we're keeping you safe on that medicine, checking whatever safety laboratories or testing are required to keep you healthy while you're on that drug. Now, number five is a daily practice of mindfulness. Spending even just five minutes once a day centered in the now. Not worrying about things that happened yesterday, not being concerned about what's going to happen tomorrow, but being in the present moment. And I firmly believe that a daily practice of mindfulness is really, really important to live our best lives and grapple with the stress associated with multiple sclerosis. My name's Aaron Boster, and I've been an MS neurologist for over a decade and a half. I have shepherded a lot of human beings through a new diagnosis of MS. And I just shared with you what I would consider to be my five top tips for trying to get yourself oriented in a newly diagnosed situation. Now, I would love to hear your thoughts and comments. Please leave them in the comments section below. I'll certainly enjoy reading them, and I'm sure that people on the channel will enjoy it as well. If you'd like to hear more tricks and tips in philosophy to up your game and live your best life despite having MS, click the video that's on your screen right now. And until my next Monday morning video or my next monthly live stream, or even better yet, the next time I see you at the Boster Center for MS, this is Aaron Boster saying be safe and take care.